After 175 years of use, with much of that very profitable, the Stroudwater navigation was abandoned in 1954. The Inland Waterways Association had joined the legal battle to keep the waterway open, but trade had gone. At least four large wooden vessels were left to sink and rot. Hello, I'm Bob Paget, exploring waterways, and today I'm at Dock Lock on the Stroudwater navigation. There were necessary diversions of watercourses, and the first three locks in the flight of five suffered every indignity that 20th century road construction could create. And heavy main road traffic, including my father's Ford Anglia, trustingly continued over the partly demolished bridge. Pike lock bottom gates were on the chamber floor displaying their heel posts and I'd never needed to use my clockwork cine camera at full aperture before. Stroudwater locks were commonly called by their location name. Court Orchard Lock gives a clue to local apple orchards and cider making. In 1989, a large volunteer work camp used a monorail system for removing spoil. This gave hope for future restoration. In the 1800s, lock keepers and mudmen were supplied with flannel coats and water boots. The 20th century volunteers wear safety boots and hard hats. Those new navvies now had the challenge of proving that the canal could be restored. The Westfield lock pound had been cut through in 1970 by the motorway contractors and Albury Brook Channel lowered. It had previously crossed the canal on the level. A temporary bund enabled this section to be rewatered and the weir brought back into use. With excavation progressing at Westfield Lock, the pound has now been drained. In 1882, the Ford brothers had purchased Queen Esther. The cargo was recorded as 80 tonnes of wheat from Newport. Being steam powered, she joined the Stryer water at Sol Junction, but then stuck fast in Dock Lock. She was either wedged in the chamber before it filled, or would not fully pass through open gates. This was a major blockage to navigation, and I imagine she had to be partly unloaded, chained in, or had rubbing strakes removed. The Ford brothers asked for the lock to be slightly widened in some way, and which they would partly pay for. But before the canal directors made any decision on this, Queen Esther had made delivery to Ryford, and on the return journey was now seriously stuck in Framelode Lock. With an eye to profit, Departure into the River Severn Tideway and the Stroudwater had been the cheaper and faster option for them. Entrance locks to most canals are the gauging locks and are built to a far tighter tolerance than locks and bridges beyond. Had Queen Esther attempted to enter the Stroudwater here, she may never have got in. There are only a few minutes of slack water before the tide changes direction and the levels drop rapidly. Queen Esther was jammed in that lock for a few days. Dock lock is probably still the tightest lock on the Stroud water. I'm Emily. And this is... I'm Georgie. Yeah, uh, we've been working on the canal for our DOV residential for Gold Duke of Edinburgh. And um, it's been such a blast, actually. We didn't realise, we didn't know what to expect when we came, um, but we have been pleasantly surprised and we've learnt so many new skills. Yeah, they let us loose on power, power saws and everything. <laughs> and we've been doing cement and um, what else did we get up to? Well, we, so we started working on this weir 
the canal and when we started off it was just sort of a concrete block with a couple of bricks Freeze laid. Blocks on yeah. it. And now we've built it up, done all the carpentry formwork and now this is our last day cementing the roof and yeah. um, we're really proud to finish it off. Yeah, and it's all been within a week. Yeah, it was incredible actually. The original overflow from the dock block pound having discharged into the backwater, then returning with the Albury Brook to cross the Westfield Pound on the level, a fresh way of discharging that overflow water is now required, and a towpath side weir is the first step. New bottom gates were fitted in 1889 and the last set in 1925, when oak and red deal were purchased from Ryford sawmills. Below Doplot there was a plentiful water supply and the usual mooring place for the company icebreaker. The elegant control weir had three innets from the canal, plus a central sluice gate to reduce the canal level. It is a cold and windy day, but winter gnats are flying in pools of warm sunlight near stonework. The course of an early cart track heads away from the canal on a gentle gradient. crosses the former turnpike and passes St Michael and All Angels Church towards Church End Mills. Goods had been transported here on the short-lived and labour-intensive Kemet navigation on the River Froome. With regular coal supplies available and delivery of Bolton and Watt steam engines from Birmingham, there was no longer reliance on the variable river flow to drive water wheels. In 1873, Zacchaeus Whiting of Chalford leased Eastington Wharf plus the house and outbuildings for £10 a year. This was at a time when a house could cost you £20, a pint of beer or a loaf of bread between tuppence and threepence. On 11th of May, 1875, Nelly, gippered by David Dangerfield, was found to be strapped to the handrails of the top gates at Dock Lock. He was cautioned by the company for the offence, although for a similar offence at Newtown Lock, the top lock of five, they levied a fine of one pound against a Benjamin Powell. Eastington Dry Dock, with wooden shingled roof, was built in 1821. By 1839 it was rented to Joe Blick for £20 a year. The entrance to the dock most likely used a single wooden gate, of which the top edge was lifted by a chain and winch, just as was the protecting stop gate at Framelode. A clock was added to the building in 1842 to monitor yard employee timekeeping. It looks as though there was a protecting bar or post placed across the dock entrance to protect the gate. This new bottom gate was typical of the work carried out by canal workers and blacksmiths. Productivity and profitability grew as it did throughout Stroud's Five Valleys. Even before the lock was fully built, coals landed at Bristol Road Wharf were already being carried a mile overland and sold from Easington Wharf. This was an early indication of the immediate success of a new waterway. A Georgian waterway which brought prosperity and social change to a region became more than just a structure in the landscape. With pike lock fitted with new ground paddles and ready for gating, and the excavation of the infield Westfield lock underway, this is a waterway coming back to life.